Hey guys, I'm back again. This is the video that I told you guys I was going to do in addition to the off-road lawnmower. The only reason I ever did this was because everybody in my family that asked questions about my off-road mower said, Why would you build a lawnmower that you can't mow your lawn? And the sheer fact is because, why the hell not? Because that thing looks badass. And, uh, I kind of proved him wrong with this little apparatus that I made here. It's a 1962 Jacobson push mower with a little throttle controller instead of a dead man switch. You know, it's older model. Push mowers didn't really have the dead man switch back then because people weren't cutting their feet off all the time, being stupid. And then, lo and behold, a couple people did here and there, and then they had to add that stuff. So, it actually makes it quite convenient for a little pull-behind mower. And I built a small hitch on the front of it to actually mount to the bottom of the rack on the... Oh, Jesus, my camera's shaky. On the bottom rack of the uh, mud horse. And no, the angle of the hitch on the push mower does not stay like that. There's a small bolt in the side of it for the bungee strap to hold it up. So if you still want to use it as a push mower, you can. And... Uh, there's only two little bolts that hold the whole uh, hitch on in the first place, so if you need to get underneath trees, it wouldn't take you but about two seconds to actually take the hitch off. So I will get into a little bit further detail here in a minute. Okay, so now I got you guys off the tripod. I can show you a little bit better. This is uh, 1962 Jacobson, as I said. It's got an aluminum deck and it's three and a half horse Briggs flathead with a vertical pull start. Nothing special, but uh, only a modification I actually did to this was a stack style exhaust because the smaller diameter at the bottom there is a half inch and it made this thing run really hot and I couldn't even start it after I ran it for about 20 minutes. So I went from the half inch size there to three quarter inch diameter to the original exhaust there. So it still muffles it and it's actually a little bit quieter than it was from factory. Uh, I completely redid this push mower my senior year and the paint on it's just kind of ugly. So other than that, this mower is like brand new. I, I completely rebuilt the motor and uh, carburetor. Fuel tank's been flushed out. Some of the original paint's still there like on the deck but and the block and everything was originally white but I had to touch up some with some black just because the blower housing was rusting and I was lazy and didn't really pull it off to make it look good. It's just a push mower, I wasn't too concerned. But onto the hitch. There's two quarter inch bolts that I drilled through the front part of the deck, ran some washers and some lock, uh, lock washer and a nut on, so that way you always have the mounting points for the hitch. There's two little lock nuts that hold the hitch on, and I uh, just put this little bolt here with the washer so you can actually put a bungee cord on it to keep it up. It does flop around a little bit, but it's not that big a deal. I used a little bit of eighth inch aluminum strap banding, riveted them to this so the A-frame kind of stays solid and uh, doesn't twist around. Only messed up once, kind of drilled a little bit lower than I needed to, or a lot a bit lower in this case. And this is a little bit thicker piece of aluminum that I used to actually tie it all together and I actually had to shim it in with another piece. There's two quarter inch bolts with quarter inch lock nuts there. But uh, take this off, the hitch goes down. You can take the bungee cord off and just shut it off to the side. But this has a very good range of motion. It moves roughly, I'd say, 10 inches from the hitch end to the ground. And uh, it actually does pivot these front wheels very nice once it's hooked up. I took a half inch bolt or 7 16 bolt flat spotted on the one end and drill the hole so I can use this as a pin. So this has a lot of slop so it kind of articulates up and down if I'm going over hills or side to side. But I will hook it up to the lawnmower, or uh, the mud horse I should say, and uh, show you how it mounts and then I'll fire everything up and I'll pull it around to show you how it performs. My grass is not very long so you might see a little bit of grass flying but nothing serious and if the camera angles are going to be shaky on this next one because I'm going to be riding, trying to drive with one hand and still film for you guys to see what it is. 
and uh, I'll also show you how it hooks up. I have these two bolts back here to hook the throttle controller because I made a quick detach so that way I can actually control the throttle of the push mower while I'm still on the mud horse itself. So I'll get back to you guys in a second. Okay, so this is it hooked up now. The cable does not go down in front of the chute. It's a uh, steel braided cable, so it actually, I mean, it flops around a little bit, but that's only if you're getting super serious, but it will not actually get stuck in anything for the range of motion. It runs up to my rear hitch, which I have two bolts that are just hand tight on there, and you can control it to full throttle and all the way back is stopped, so that way if something happens, I can stop the engine and, you know, pull it the rest of the way I need to. There's the bolt that I was telling you about on how it has a free range of motion. It flops around good. So, I mean, it makes a little bit of racket. Sorry for the angles again. But it does very well. And there's enough flex in it, because it's thin aluminum, that it will uh, handle some pretty decent hills. So I'll fire them up and show you guys how it pulls and cuts. Second gear. got a very good range of motion. It steers very nicely. I'll make a corner. Like I said, it's a bit hard to film with pulling it, driving it with one hand and whatnot. But uh, yeah, it was just a short little video I wanted to make on how you can still make your off-road lawnmower a pull behind with little to no money if you have some of the aluminum sitting around. Or you could even do it with steel if you have thinner pieces of steel. Um, this little project literally cost me like four bucks in bolts and rivets and the aluminum I had sitting around, but it's probably about eight to ten dollars worth of aluminum, depending where you can get it from, what state you live in. Uh, Pennsylvania materials are a little bit cheaper, but yeah, that was a little project that I thought was pretty neat. You could still, it takes a little practice to keep a good clean line, but you get used to it once you know what you're doing. I've only had this for about a week, and I've cut my grass once or twice with it already, and it it's a lot shorter than pushing it. So, thanks guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. Please like, comment, subscribe if you liked it. Leave me any positive comments toward uh, maybe how I can improve my design or maybe if uh, you have any questions on how I did something else, let me know. Have a good day.